All right, I want to record a quick video on the basics of writing a function in R. And so whenever I'm writing a function, I always try to start with some sort of vector or something that I want to use the function on. So let's make a little example vector. So I have x is 813. Obviously, if I, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Obviously, if I'm looking inside of x, I get 813. And so let's say a very simple function would be to that it, it'll add 10 to a vector. So let's come up with the first thing is you come up with a good name for the function, add 10. And then I need to use the function call in order to say, hey, I'm about to make a function. And what goes in here is the is what I'm going to give to the function. And so I have to name that any vector. And so what am I gonna do? I'm gonna take any vector and I'm going to add 10 to it. And that's it, that's it. I've got the name of the function, I have a call to a function. I have, what am I, what's my argument or what am I gonna use? It's, and I named it any vector and this name has to match up with it down here. And then I have something that it does and it evaluates the function returns the last thing that's here. Um, so I can look at how this works. If I do add 10 of X, X was 813. It adds 10 to each element. 10 to eight is 18, 10 to one is 11, 10 to three is 13. And so it's like that. You might be used to This is a little bit more common in other languages. Let's actually just put these side by side. So if you've used other languages, these two things are actually equivalent. This creates a new quantity called result with any vector plus 10, and then this returns result. This just calculates any vector plus 10, but R has this rule where the last thing that it evaluates in a function, it returns. And so I don't need this specific thing. These are equivalent though. Um, as an example of that, let's say we do, let's say the it's defined as this. So it evaluates any vector plus 10 inside the function and then it returns any vector because it's the last thing. Now if I do add 10, it didn't add 10 because I added 10 to any vector, but I didn't save it anywhere. And then I just looked at any vector again. And so it returned that vector as well. So let's do that. What if I don't want to always add 10? What if I want to add some number? So what if I want to add n? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a, another thing that we're going to give the function. And it's going to be the amount that we're going to add to the vector. And so add n takes two arguments, any vector and then n, and it returns that vector plus whatever n is. And so as an example of that, let's do add n x. What do you guys want to, what do you want to add to it? Now let's do one. And so remember if I look inside x, it was 813. If I do add n of x comma one, it give, it's 924. You might wonder now that we have two arguments here, any vector and n are two parameters. What, how did it know that x was the vector and one was the n? And so it actually did order matching. And so if I don't specify what's what, it matches the order. So here, I don't know if this is, this gives the same thing because if I add one to, to x, whatever, so it's the same thing. So this isn't a great example for this, but now what it's doing is one is any vector and x is n, uh, depending on the order. And so what you'll sometimes see, this that is not what we intended though, but you can do it in the way of which we atten intend um, by, if we make it non-communicative, I think you can, you'll can you be able to see the difference. Notice how that's, if you pause and think about how that's different. So add an x1, I didn't multiply, I multiplied n by 10 and then added it, so that got, 18, 11, and 13. If I added n, I multiplied x by 10. And so I can specify this um, in a certain way. So I want n, I want one to be n. So if I specify what's what, the ordering no longer matters. 
I've specified the names. And so now it doesn't matter that these are out of order because it's matching n equals one and any vector equals x. It's matching those based on names, no longer based on location. Um, and so now this, notice how these two things are equivalent. This matched on, matched on location, this matched based on name. But anyways, if you think about the base, the very basics of a function, you name it, you assign it to function, you tell it what it's gonna take, and then you have something evaluated in there, and you can execute it on, on different sorts of things. Of course, you can have different things that go in there. Okay, very basics of writing functions.